There's been a lot of heated discussion around the new live-action Disney Little Mermaid movie. People complaining about the race of the actress playing Ariel. Other people saying it doesn't matter what race she is. It's too woke. The people who think it's woke are bigoted. It's a soulless cash grab. You're just triggered. No, you're triggered. Stop changing these classic stories. You all just hate politics change. out of my Disney movie. People, people, stop. All this bickering and fighting is tearing us apart. We can't afford to keep doing this. I have a message for my fellow humans. Sorry dogs, you're gonna have to take a seat for this one. Mankind is at a crossroads. There are existential threats facing us as a species and they're not easy to fix. But I believe it's possible if we work together. If we can find it within ourselves to focus on the things that unite us rather than the things that divide us. Have you ever heard the idea that the only thing that truly unites humanity is a common enemy? Well, I'm here to tell you, we have a common enemy in this Little Mermaid War. This crappy, low-budget Little Mermaid ripoff from the 90s. If we can find common ground on this issue, I believe we can find common ground on bigger issues. If we can all come together and say as one voice that this movie sucks major ass, there is still hope. People, what I'm saying is, this movie is so bad, it might save humanity. Now first off, you might think it's unfair to call this movie a ripoff when the Disney version is itself based on a pre-existing story by Hans Christian Andersen, but it clearly steals a number of visuals and story beats unique to the Disney version. The only thing they forgot to steal is the part where the Disney version is actually a good film. This flagrant theft isn't surprising if you're familiar with the production studio Good Times Entertainment, whose entire business model was churning out low-budget Disney ripoffs, and they happily show you that with this intro sequence at the beginning of the movie. Never seen a company take so much pride in creating second-rate knockoffs. But who am I to judge? After all, the Good Times Little Mermaid movie is the version children love, as the VHS case tells us. I feel like bad products are always trying to convince you that they're not bad on the packaging. Some people call these kinds of movies mockbusters. I like to call it theftertainment, and unfortunately for Good Times Entertainment, they flew their theftertainment wings a little too close to the sun because they did eventually get sued by Disney. I feel like all the Disney lawyers had to do was show that intro sequence in court, and the judge was immediately like, I've seen enough, lawsuit grant. Granted. Lawsuit granted. What does a judge actually say when a plaintiff wins a court case? I don't actually know. Winner! So the movie starts with our protagonist, Princess Lena, excitedly rushing back to her home kingdom to celebrate because it's her birthday. A detail that has basically no significance whatsoever to the story. She's accompanied by a dolphin named Vink, who she refers to as her pet, but he speaks English and seems to be at least as intelligent as the mermaids, so I think that makes him more of a slave than a pet. Come on, Vink, you slow poke! I'm coming, I'm coming! Vink has accidentally revealed to Lena that her sister Trish Tris is planning a surprise birthday party. Promise me you won't tell Princess Tris that I told you about it. I don't want your sister angry with me. Lena barges in on the party planning committee as they're putting up decorations. Ooh, underwater theme. Lena's sister Tris decides to give her her birthday present early, a beautiful pearl necklace. It was made for you, but it's your best wreath. Oh, uh, or a, uh, wreath? For your head. I feel like it actually is a necklace, but Trish just couldn't fit it over Lena's disproportionately large head, so she just like pretended that it's a head wreath. I think Lena just goes through life oblivious to how big her head is and just thinks that anything that doesn't fit over her head like wasn't meant to. A t-shirt! Thank you! I can't wait to try it on! How do I look? We learn that Lena secretly has dreams of visiting the surface and meeting a human prince. Maybe I'll wear it when I meet my handsome prince. Oh, you're not gonna start on that prince thing again. You know, your father would be very angry to hear you speak like that. Why in the name of the seven seas would you want to meet someone who has legs? Firstly, as someone that has legs, f you. Secondly, it's not that weird that Lena wants to meet a human, considering that the mermaids apparently have statues of humans idolizing them. As Lena daydreams about visiting the surface, little does she know that Cassandra the evil sea witch is watching her from afar. At least I think she's watching from afar. I think we're supposed to assume that this is some kind of magical all-seeing portal, but it just looks like Cassandra's watching Lena through a regular window like 20 feet away. Lena wants to see the above world, eh? Then see it, she shall. I'll help her, but she will have to pay the price. $29.99! <laughs> Stupid joke. Cassandra creates a magical whirlpool that sucks Lena and Vink up to the surface. We're in the above world. You know, we really are going to be late for the party. Just go ahead of me, Vink, and tell Father I'll be there soon. How come you always get me into trouble? So Vink goes back home and buys Lena some time while she explores, and pretty soon she stumbles upon a ship with humans. Humans. Oh, I've got to see what they look like. 
Step lively there, lads! Okay, I think I'll stick with mermaids. I don't think it's a good idea to have a captain whose eyebrows are so big that they're covering his eyes. I'm not a sailing expert, but I'm pretty sure that being able to see is important for commanding a ship. Lena discovers that below deck, there is an actual prince on board the ship. It's nice of the captain to have this party, but I wonder how he found out today is my birthday. I must confess, I had a small hand in it, your highness. Okay, so apparently it's the prince's birthday too, on the same day as Lena's birthday. It seems like that's supposed to be significant for some reason, but the movie doesn't expand on that. Like, we're supposed to conclude they're destined for each other because they have the same birthday. Oh my! Cosgrove, did you see that? I did think I saw something out there. Rather doubtful, your highness, unless of course it had fins and a tail. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with Cosgrove's voice? Rather doubtful, your highness, unless of course it had fins and a tail. <laughs> he sounds like if British was a disease. Mr. Cosgrove, we ran some tests, and I'm sorry to tell you that you're severely British. Good heavens, is it rather contagious? Extremely. The prince and Cosgrove head up to the deck to join the festivities, food, fireworks, and of course the ceremonial dancing of the tiny men. <laughs> Wow, they're really enjoying that. I guess when you're stuck on a boring ship out at sea, the bar for entertainment is extremely low. Hey, check it out. Look what Gary's doing. <laughs> hey, cool. Hey. hey. Yeah, Gary. Hey. 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 Captain. How can I thank you for this party? A word to the king about getting me a new ship would be nice. I think this bucket is older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because he's 900 years old. Just as the celebration is getting going, the festivities come to a screeching halt when they notice there's a storm brewing in the distance. All right, lads, look lively. Let's set the sails and see if we can outrun her. Hold steady to our course. We've still got a chance to outrun her. Never in all my days have I seen a storm like this. But then again, I've never seen anything since I've had these eyebrows. The captain keeps referring referring to the storm as her? We've still got a chance to outrun her! I know sailors do that with ships. Do they do that with storms too? Or maybe when the captain says her, he's talking about Lena? We've still got a chance to outrun her! Someone tell me what's going on! I can't f***ing see! Stand clear! The main mast's giving way! <laughs> Don't worry, lads! We'll use me eyebrows as a mast! Your Majesty, wait! You crown! Wow, that ship is falling apart really easily. The captain did try to warn the prince. This bucket is older than I am. <laughs> you know, I understand that buying a new ship is expensive and they want to save money, but you probably shouldn't be cheap about the only thing that's going to keep you alive at sea. This ship is so old, we'll almost certainly be dead before the night's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the ship is old, it should still hold up better than this. I mean, come on, this is just cheap. It's like they bought this thing from the bargain bin at the ship. Store. I mean, whoever manufactured this ship clearly didn't put much money or effort into creating it. Oh no, it was good times! Now well, that explains it. Your Majesty, wait! Your crown! Cosgrove, do you really think my crown means more to me than you do? Listen, Cosgrove, you mean more to me than my possessions. How many times do I have to stick my finger up your nose to make you understand that? A hundred times? Because I'll do it, Cosgrove. I'll do whatever it takes. You're the most important thing in the world to me, you silly old fool. And if I need to stick my whole hand up your nose to make you understand that, I'll do it. That's how much you mean to me. I feel like Cosgrove is the one the prince should be in a relationship with, not Lena. We gotta ship these two. Although I guess technically the movie already did ship them. <laughs> We're in this together. Hold on to that piece of mast. Your Highness, look out! Oh, oh. Why is part of the ship hurtling towards the prince like a torpedo? That ship was so poorly made, it not only failed to keep the passengers safe, it's actively trying to kill them. The prince goes under, and Lena dives after him to save his life. Your Majesty, you're, you're all right. Shh, you're dead now. Can't find me. I'll never forget you. Uh. 
Whoa! Apparently consent isn't a concept under the sea. Under the sea, there's no consent. You don't ask first when you are under the sea. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba. After Lena kisses the prince, he speaks to her for the first time. I wonder what he's going to say. Um, well, she went off. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. With the prince and Cosgrove now safely on land, Lena leaves the two of them to be helped by a group of girls. Look at those men! They're hurt! They must be shipwrecked! Uh, is this girl okay? I know you can get seasick. Can you get land sick too? Is it just me, or did it linger on that shot of that rock just a little too long? I thought the rock was gonna start narrating. <laughs> and to this very day, that was the craziest thing I ever did see. Back down on the ocean floor, Lena's father, the king, has found out that Lena's been gone all night, and he's so furious that he's shooting lightning bolts in every direction. Wouldn't those lightning bolts electrocute everyone around them since they're underwater? In the middle of the king's tantrum, Lena swims in sheepishly, or officially, I guess, and apologizes to her father. Hi, father. Sorry I'm late. What? Wow, I don't know if there's a what Hall of Fame, but if there is, that's gotta be in it. What? While Lena's reeling from the epic what she just endured, the king lectures her sternly for her indiscretion. Now don't start turning on the tears. How do you know if someone's crying underwater? Does the water around you get slightly saltier? And while I'm nitpicking, why is Lena so petite when her dad is f***ing huge? It's like the only thing she inherited from her dad was his giant head, and she inherited the rest of her body from her mother, who I'm assuming was a spaghetti noodle. I think you'd better go live at the reef cottage for a while so you can think about the trouble you've caused us all. Go live at the reef cottage? That's a weird way to phrase a punishment. Timmy, you've been very disobedient. Go live in your room. Go to your room and establish a new life there. And don't take Vink with you. You think better when he's not around. How did Vink get this reputation as a bad influence? He's the one trying to keep Lena out of trouble. On her way to the reef cottage, Lena comes across her sisters playing Crab K. Lena? Lena, come play Crab K with us. What the hell is this game? They're using a living fish as a ball and hitting it with a mallet. It's just senseless animal cruelty. Also, why use a fish as a ball when there are pearls all over the place, which are, you know, actual balls? They just want to hit animals. I'm starting to understand why Vink is so scared of Triss. Promise me you won't tell Princess Triss that I told you about it. I don't want your sister angry with me. Hey, Vink, come play Crab K with us. Uh, okay. Hey, where's the ball? Whoa! I want to point out too that there's no point to this scene. Tris asks Lena if she wants to play Crab K. Lena says she can't, and then that's it. I think the director of this movie just came up with that joke and thought it was so funny that it just had to be in the movie. Guys, guys, I just had the most hilarious idea for this movie. Oh, great, let's hear it. Okay, so the mermaids are playing croquet, right? Okay. Why? Why would, why would mermaids scene. play croquet? But for the hoop, they're using a crab. Why would they okay, use a crab? Why not just a hoop? And they call the game, <laughs> get this, Crab K. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? No, no, it's not. That, that's nothing. I can't stop laughing There's at nothing it. there. Make it happen. Well, we'd have to animate all that. That's like an extra three weeks of work. Do it. So Lena's sitting in the reef cottage, waiting on her punishment. When, uh oh, here comes old troublemaker Vink. What's he gonna get up to now? Uh, hey Lena, I thought while you were in the reef, we could do some refer. <gasps> <laughs> Lena tells Vink that she plans to return to the surface against her father's wishes, and she forces Vink to go with her. You mean you'll go with me? It doesn't look like I have a choice. Sounds like Vink is well aware of Lena's history with lack of consent. He's not here. Oh, I can feel it. She can feel it? Does she have a prince sonar stuffed into that giant head of hers? Oh, I can feel it. Good, that we could go home. With my heart breaking? Look how scared Vink is of Lena. This dude's got some trauma. So with the prince nowhere in sight, they head back down under the sea. So what was the point of coming up to the surface this time? This movie's only 48 minutes long and they made a scene where they traveled to a place just to go, hmm, well, nothing's happening here. Let's go back. So Lena heads back home to get help from Triss, who hints that she knows something about the prince. Oh, if you know something about my prince, you've got to tell me. It's mermaid law. You legally have to tell me. Also, my prince. My prince. You haven't even had a real conversation with the guy. Um. Well, she went off. Yeah. How can he be yours when you don't even know if he likes you? He does like me. I decided for him. His name is 
Prince Stefan. Prince Stefan. Triss, like everybody else, disapproves of Lena's obsession with the prince, and she shows her disapproval by giving Lena a map to Prince Stefan's castle, because according to her, I can see you're going to be absolutely hopeless until you get to see him. Surely when she sees the things she's obsessed with, she'll lose interest. Hasn't this poor man had enough? Lena already stalked him and violated him after he almost died. Now you're gonna dox him? Also, if you live in the ocean, do you really need a map to find a castle by the sea? Seems like all you need is a piece of paper that says, go that way. So Lena and Vink go off to find Stefan's castle, and when they find it, they overhear the prince in his bedchamber, bemoaning the fact that his parents are forcing him into an arranged marriage with a princess from another kingdom. Princess Anna, what do I know of her except that she is the princess of a land far away from my own? Such marriages make for peace, your highness, ensuring that one country will not invade another. What about love, Cosgrove? Who cares about unfathomable amounts of bloodshed and destruction when there's a small possibility of love? If only I could find the one who rescued me from the sea and could make her my wife. Okay, so just a few seconds ago, he was upset that he had to marry a princess that he doesn't know. Now he wants to marry some other girl that he also doesn't know. Did you hear that, Fink? He longs to find me, to marry me. His longing to find you and actually finding you are two very different things, Lena. He has legs and you don't. And it's not just the legs, Lena. Your entire lower bodies are different. How's it gonna work on your wedding night? Think of the logistics, Lena. The logistics! Side note, Stefan and Cosgrove are the only ones from that shipwreck who show up for the entire rest of the movie. So it stands to reason that all the other people on that ship died. And the really messed up thing is Stefan and Cosgrove never even even mention the rest of the crew. They just survived a tragedy where everyone around them died and he's like, oh, I hope I find someone special. So Lena returns to Triss, who is shocked to discover that seeing the prince didn't make Lena lose interest in him. I thought once you got to see him, that would be the end of it. I can't believe my plan didn't work. It's almost like I'm an idiot or something. You think you're in love with him, but you can't be. He's a human. And that's why I want to be a human too. The only one who knows about the dark powers that can turn people into humans is Cassandra the Sea Witch. Where are you going? I'm going to see Cassandra. Oops. What if there hadn't been a way to transform into a human? Lena seemed determined to be with the prince regardless. I'm assuming mermaid childbirth works similarly to fish, and some fish lay a lot of eggs. I don't know if the prince would have been prepared for that level of responsibility. So, Lena, how many kids do you think you'd like to have? Oh. I think it would be nice to have maybe three or four hundred. Lena and Vink discover that the path to Cassandra's house is fraught with danger. They have to pass through a path of whirlpools and a field of groping hands. You know, this movie must have the highest ratio of arms to legs in film history. While they're trapped, Cassandra shows up and commands the gropies to let them go, and she takes them the rest of the way to her house. You'd think Cassandra would make the path to her house more convenient, considering she wants Lena to get there. If I were Cassandra, I'd make my own shuttle service that takes people straight to my lair. So Cassandra tells Lena that she can grant her wish to become human, and she starts concocting a magical transformation potion. Are you sure this guy will marry you? I think he will. He better marry you! Whoa. You know, I get that she's an evil witch and all, but she's really rooting for Lena. We could all use someone like Cassandra in our corner, you know? Well, I'm going on my first date with this new guy. I hope he likes me. He better like you! If he doesn't see how wonderful you are, he shall perish! I can give you legs so you can walk on the land. But if he marries someone else, then, on his wedding day, you shall turn into sea foam. <laughs> oh, all you need to do is drink this brew, and your tail will shrink into what men call legs. Do you not call them legs? Your tail will shrink into what men call legs, and what we call butt arms. Not so fast. Did you think I would give you this priceless brew for nothing? Well, what do you want? Your voice. How can I make... Prince Stefan love me if I cannot speak. You will have legs to dance upon. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna get very far with just dancing. If I saw a girl coming towards me and she was just dancing and not speaking, I'd be terrified. <laughs> Hello? Can I help you? Hello? Who are you? Hey, hey, back up. Hey, don't come any closer! Why aren't you talking?! So Lita decides that the terms of Cassandra's deal are acceptable, and she drinks the potion. I agree to the payment. No! No! Ah! Why is she shouting no, like what's happening is some shocking twist? Cassandra literally just explained the whole thing to her, and she agreed to it. Is Lena part goldfish? Because she's got the memory of one. Excellent. I almost hate to ask this, but... 
What about me? Do you want my voice too? I can sing. La 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 la. By the way, check out Cassandra's home. It's wall to wall potions. Must be hard to keep the regular drinks separated from the magical potions. Ah, I can finally relax after a long day of bamboozling naive damsels. Hmm, that's not wine. I have got to organize. Lena washes up on shore where two birds help clothe her and agree to bring her to the castle to get some help. She can't talk. You better come with us to the castle. Now in this scene, there's a technical flub where the voices of the male and female birds get mixed up. A sure sign that she's a mermaid turned human. We better get her something to wear. Which is interesting because in the United States, this movie has not one, not two, not three, but four versions across 12 years. And they never bothered to fix this error even on the DVD. Now, if we're being generous, we could postulate that perhaps once the movie was finalized, there was some technical obstacle preventing them from reopening the editing tomb. I, I don't know how movies were edited back then. Well, as it turns out, the first version of this movie had a title sequence that listed the American Film Investment Corporation as one of the studios involved. That studio later changed its name to Golden Films, and future versions of this movie had an updated title sequence showing the new name, which means they were able to edit the film after its initial release, so they had the opportunity to fix this glaring mistake, and they didn't. Not because they couldn't, just because of good old-fashioned not giving a shit. Anyway, back on the beach, Lena stands up to go but has trouble walking, and she falls down and faints for some reason. I mean, I guess that makes sense. She doesn't have enough blood in her body for two legs and her gigantic head. The birds go to notify the kingdom and Stefan takes Lena in, completely unaware that she's the one who saved him out at sea. We must show her the same kindness we were shown by the girl who saved our lives. We should treat her with kindness rather than cut off her head like we usually do with strangers. Over time, Lena regains her health and the prince spends quite a bit of time with her to the chagrin of his father and mother, who fear that he's falling in love with Lena and might go against their wishes to marry Princess Anna from another kingdom. Kingdom. That suspicion turns out to be true when Stefan tells Lena that he wants to marry her. Mother and father insisted I take this voyage to meet Princess Anna, but I promise you, after this trip, I will marry you. At which point this 10 second dialogueless interaction unfolds. Now I can't play the original audio because it's just music and sound effects and YouTube will copyright claim it, but this clip is otherwise unedited. I will marry you. Hey, Stefan, you know you can talk, right? I mean, what is happening here? It's like there's a telepathic conversation happening between the two of them. Hey, good times, when you're making low-budget animation, you can't have scenes with non-verbal interactions. The visuals are not good enough to convey emotions on their own. We need dialogue to decipher what the characters on screen are feeling. Allow me to demonstrate with a little game called Guess That Emotion! Can you tell what emotion Lena is expressing here? You might guess something like mild surprise, but you'd be wrong. This is Lena's screen screaming in terror as she sucked up into a whirlpool. Help me! How about this one? What emotion do you think the prince is feeling in this moment? Well, he's smiling, so he must at least be happy, right? Nope! This is the prince on the sinking ship, watching in horror as everyone around him is running for their life. I didn't pay much attention to this at first, but he really is smiling in this shot. Maybe the ship falling apart wasn't an accident. Maybe Stefan sabotaged the ship so that everyone else would die and it would only be him and Cosgrove together. Anyway, my point is, we need dialogue in this movie. Like, what is going on in this scene? The prince tells Lena he's going to marry her after meeting Princess Anna. Lena appears to be distraught. So then Stefan goes over to reassure her by staring at her, which works. And then the problem is resolved. Does that actually work? Can you just stare at someone until they're happy? Are you happy now? The marriage situation is further complicated because not only does Stefan not want to marry Princess Anna, but also Princess Anna doesn't want to marry Stefan. But you can't marry this Prince Stefan Anna. Oh, Maxwell, you know I love you. I have no choice in this matter. Father has decided I must marry Prince Stefan, and that's all there is to it. But when Stefan sees Anna and realizes that she's the girl that found him washed up on the shore, he thinks she's the one who saved him. You're the one who found me. You saved my life. Well, this is delightful. You two were destined to be married. But I must tell you that I love another. What? You love another? This is an insult to myself and my daughter. Your father is right. You did save my life. 
Now you're talking sense! I knew you'd see it my way. So Stefan wants to marry Lena for love rather than pragmatism, but then he feels like he has to marry Anna because he thinks she saved his life. So if I'm tracking this right, Stefan's list of reasons to marry someone by priority, being helped by someone is number one, being in love with someone is number two, and below both of those is preventing a literal f***ing war. So it's decided that Stefan will marry Princess Anna. Lena is of course devastated at this turn of events, although her face apparently hasn't gotten the message yet. Everyone sails off back to Stefan's kingdom, but Lena's father shows up to put a halt to the proceedings so that his daughter doesn't turn into sea foam. I'm not going to let that prince marry another girl and destroy you! <laughs> I'm not sure that killing everyone on the ship is the most effective solution here. This is the craziest protest to a marriage I've ever seen. Should anyone present know of any reason that this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. This cannot happen! The ship will sink unless we secure it. I love when a man is scared for his life. So now there's a storm, again, and the ship mast breaks and falls down, again. The mast almost crushes Anna, who rather than running away, just stands there and shouts for Maxwell to save her. Maxwell! Hey Anna, you're not a mermaid. You have legs. Use them! To reward Maxwell for saving his daughter's life, Anna's father allows her to marry Maxwell instead of Stefan. So it all works out. Father, thank you! Stop the storm! Away, sky creatures! You don't understand. Uh, they're getting married. Hi, we sorted everything out. You don't have to kill us. What? So Stefan and Lena finally get married, and they lived happily ever after. Until Lena's neck snapped under the weight of her giant head. I think the production of this movie was running out of money towards the end. Not only did they mix up the voices of those two birds, but there's also like visual details that start to change or go missing in certain shots. And Lena never gets her voice back the way that Ariel does in the Disney Little Mermaid, which I can only assume is because Good Times decided it was cheaper to leave her voiceless than to pay the voice actor to record more dialogue. Dude, I thought the movie was gonna completely run out of money before the end and just cut to the producer saying what happens next. Report to the captain. He'll... Uh, yeah, so then Maxwell saves Anna, and then Stefan and Lena get to be with each other, and then they get married, and then the end. This is the version children love. Also, Stefan never mentions the fact that Lena doesn't speak. Does he not notice? One day he's just like, even though we've been married for 30 years, somehow I feel like I don't know much about you. Also, this isn't relevant to the movie, but do mermaids have a recessive gene where every once in a while a mermaid baby is born that's just like a whole fish? So these are our kids. This is Sarah, this is Brandon, and this is Robbie. He doesn't speak or blink. We're not sure if he has a soul. Even though Good Times Entertainment doesn't exist in name anymore, they were absorbed into a company called Synodime several years ago. So technically they still exist in some form, which means there's a chance we might get a Little Mermaid sequel where Vink gets his legs. <laughs> Hey ladies, does anyone want to marry me? Anyway, thanks for watching. This video took me a long time to make because I'm new to the whole commentary style videos and I have no idea what I'm doing. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comma, and subscribe to Netflix. Thank you for watching.